The mountains of northern Arizona were once home to an incredibly powerful, yet largely unknown, tribe of Native Americans. They migrated to this region from the west coast in 200 AD and thrived in the area for 1200 years. By 1000 AD, they began to build these large hilltop sites, serving a variety of functions including defense, religious sacred locations, and domestic habitation. By the 1980s, archaeologists had collected enough data to determine this was a standalone tribe, which was given the name the Prescott Culture. They built all of these structures on rock outcroppings, which made sense considering the ground soil turns into a sloppy mess during the wet season. I've now located 70 of these sites. There are rumored to be around 240. I recently made a trip to the town of Prescott for supplies, and on the way, I decided to check out a side canyon, which I've been to only a few times. The last time I was here, I explored an incredible hilltop site consisting of 17 rooms, and on this particular adventure, I noticed a rock outcropping with what appeared to be a circular structure on Google Earth, which led me to believe it could be a ruin. After two hours of 4 x 4 I got within range of my drone to check it out, and just as I suspected, this is a site from the Prescott culture. This arrow is pointing to the circular structure I saw on satellite images, however, there is much more to this ancient complex. Flying with the drone right to left, you can see how this geologic formation provides good security and great views while also providing a place to operate during the monsoon season and snowy season. All of these hilltop sites were from the Big Chino era, which lasted from 1000 AD to 1400 AD. With this site being anywhere from 600 to 1000 years old, there's going to be extensive weathering from centuries of neglect. These arrows show the debris field from walls that have fallen down over the years. Some of the sites I've visited have rhyolite stones placed near the top of the walls, and highlighted here you can see the rhyolite stones like this red, it kind of almost looked like sandstone but just have a red hue to it. And the rhyolite was mined from a hilltop located 15 miles to the south of where this place is located, so there must have been some sort of significant importance to having these included in the wall construction. Here is a nice example of basalt walls that are pretty much still intact. And you can see the base rocks underneath where they built the walls over the top of it. So the construction of these dry stack walls and the fact they're still standing, you know, anywhere from 600 to 1,000 years later is extremely impressive. And moving along here, that's, I call this like the western side of the, of the site, you can definitely see how the walls have fallen down. Once the temperatures cool down this fall, I'm planning a trip out here to backpack to this location and sleep out in a tent next to this structure uh, just to kind of experience what it's like to get the sunset there and the sunrise and see what sort of artifacts are sitting on the ground. So I really look forward to that trip. Go. Oh. <laughs> you get so excited. Come on over here, girl. Come on. Hey, what's up, Scout? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> hey, don't, don't, don't jump up on him. Hey, do it. Right, you gotta hang tight, girl. Just hang tight. We gotta get that fish smell out. <laughs> the most horrible smell on the planet. <laughs> she looks like a rat. <laughs> like a wet rat, doesn't she? I was trying she? to get her blue, yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> now she's putting her head on your shoulder. That's okay. cute. Are you running? <laughs> <laughs> she's so funny. You're so funny. You give him a kiss. Do you give him a kiss? You gotta wait to get it rid of socks, though. Okay, keep it on. Okay, we're not gonna get fish. <laughs> she keeps going. <laughs> she says, I want some fish. <laughs> <laughs> we did it because we didn't want you to come in, so we're in a hurry, but we can help you pass in the center. <laughs> Doesn't awesome. she look great? It looks very pink. And, and it's, it's all, it's all waterproof. Oh. See? <laughs> I am so thankful for Sandy and Roman from Prescott's Paws and Claws because they've really taught me a lot when it comes to animal nutrition. And we've got Meadow on a really great raw diet from a company called Bold by Nature. And what it is is they come in this little package and there's little individual patties. Each one is considered a meal and it's a complete nutrition. It's got the raw meat in there. It's got all the greens that you need, the supplements and all the nutrients that is, are essential for, you know, for a dog. And it's really easy to, to make these. I just kind of put it in warm water to, to, to thaw it out a little bit. Meadow is always super anxious when, when we're making these meals. <laughs> She's like front and center watching me stir it. And she mows it down once I put it on the floor. So really good stuff. I'll put the link in the video description below for Bull by Nature. There was one more location that I wanted to check out before we left our, this area and went back to my place. And this particular site is located on the edge of an urban center in central Arizona. So it's almost like hiding in plain sight on this uh, hilltop to the west. And this would be considered what they call a, a lookout site for the Prescott culture because it's situated here on this little saddle in between two massive valleys. And the reason why it's an important site is because it's the intersection of the Mojave Trail, which was the trail that went west to the Pacific, 
and the Palakwapi Trail, which was the trail to the Hopi Mesas in the east. And so it's a definite trade route, and this would be a great lookout point in looking down into the valleys on both areas to see who's coming and going. All of these lookout sites share the following qualities. They are semi to fully enclosed single room structures with no evidence of roofing. The artifact assemblage is sparse to non-existent, so you won't find very much of anything on the ground around these lookout sites. Uh, it does have a high line of site connectivity to where you can see 10 plus sites from these lookout locations. The room dimensions are typically two to five meters on each side, and the walls are thick is what you see here, so that's pretty standard. And the interior generally is not subdivided, but in this particular site, there is a little bit of a subdivision right here in the lower right-hand corner. You can see an additional wall that was put inside. Not really sure what that was for, but I'm, I'm positive there was a reason. I just don't know what it is. And one thing that always strikes me about these sites is if you look at the thickness of these walls, these walls are anywhere from two to six feet thick. Some of the sites that I've been to, they've got really thick walls. And I always think about the amount of effort it would take to build these structures, not to mention having dry stacked walls last this long. Stacking dry stones and, and making walls out of it is one of the hardest things to do. And so looking at a, a little bit closer section here, you can just see how much stonework was involved in it. And I wonder, like, how many stones are here? Like, you know, how many stones are these? Was it 1,000? Was it 10,000? And you can see on the sides how it's sloughed off as particular or, or certain walls have kind of caved in over the eons. But the majority of the, the base of the structure is still there. And I would say some of these walls are probably anywhere from four to five feet tall which is just amazing that this is still standing like this. And it was on this rock outcropping, which these rock outcroppings like this are just perfect for the monsoon season. You could be hanging out in there, no problem. And even with a bunch of rain or snow hitting the area, you wouldn't have to deal with that, that like slimy wet mud that, that uh, plagues the region when it gets wet. So anyway, that's it for today. Kind of a little bit of a shorter video. I absolutely love checking out these ruins and I look forward to the weather cooling down so we can check out some more.